Ice cream conversation. Ice cream conversation. Forever on the grind all day, every day. Ice cream combos, always real, they never play. Download the podcast, listen on any day. Why didn't I do this sooner? Only thing you ever say. Xavier, best host of all time. All of the faithful listeners will say they never lie. Check every story, they run like me with the rhymes. When other shows report, anything, it should be a crime. Entertainment news, yeah, I gotta get mine From ICC and you should be inclined To do the same if you got half a mind I do co-sign this lady to shine like Frankenstein Cut it today, design Icecreamcombos.com Tune in, Tune in. Yeah. This influence, influence by Icecreamcombos.com Welcome to the Ice Cream Combos podcast, where we serve delicious scoops of entertainment and celebrity news. I am your host, Xaviera. And I'm your co-host, Carla. And as always, we thank you for tuning in. Today, we are on episode 358, and the title of today's show is Context Matters. Mm. Yeah, girl, we going in today. So, um, Carla, real quick, how have yes. you been? How have you been? Because it's been a crazy week. <laughs> I've been great. Listen, catching some great spring weather in in mm. on in November. So, mm. listen, I can't complain. Okay. What's up with you? How you feeling? Ch- I have been struggling with this fupa. I got this fupa thing here, and I don't know when it popped up. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard about, I heard legends and stories yeah. about fupas, but now I'm in the fupa gang and <laughs> not I, legends though. <laughs> yeah, legend. I'm so mad at you right now. <laughs> so I got to figure out how to get rid of this god darn fupa girl. This thing messing with my spirit. So Man, listen. every single Sunday, I promise myself I'm going to work out starting next week. And every single Sunday on Monday, I'm going to start a diet on Monday. I'm going to start working out. And guess what I did today on Monday? What you did? What you did? Talk JB into going to get me some Burger King. I had a <laughs> girl, you said you you straight up started that like you was like, girl, I put in an hour on the treadmill, put in an hour on this. St-. But listen, I'm with I'm there right with you. You know, it's like mm. the intentions be there, right? Mm. I think like I admire those that like truly, truly dedicate themselves to working out. I mean, just on a regular basis. Like, shout out to all of y'all because that's one of the, to me, that's one of the hardest things to truly, you mm-hmm. know, so many things I'd be like, oh, I dedicate myself to this, this, but that just like, and I'm talking about years. I can do it for months, but then I get off track. But see, you know I, I admire you because you do, you nah, do girl. your walking. You are much Man. more active than I am. Listen, ask me last time I walked. I'm not even trying to answer that on the air. Okay. All right. right. I'm going to leave you. I'm going to leave you be. I'm going to leave you be. I'm going to leave you be. Um, ICC friends, we have a lot to cover. But before we start getting into today's show, I just want to remind you guys, please subscribe, comment, share, like, um, just let someone know about the Ice Cream Combos podcast. We sincerely appreciate the support that we have been getting from you guys. The yes. numbers are looking great. The podcast is growing very, very fast, and we are so excited. And yes. we just appreciate you tuning in every week and subscribing, okay? So, um, Carla, we got a lot mm-hmm. to dis- discuss today. I mean, we literally yeah, we have good, bad, ugly, and atrocious. Yes. For real. And um, I think it's only right that we start out today's show by extending our condolences to anybody, family, um, law enforcement, paramedics, just yes. anyone impacted by the tragic events that took place at Astro World over the weekend, Astro World yeah, Festival. Such a tragedy. Real, and you know what makes you know what makes a tragedy extra tragic mm-hmm. when it could have been totally. Preventable. Yes, yes. That's what that's what's heart really, really heartbreaking about this. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're, you're it, absolutely right. You're right. I think that's when you really it really sinks into your stomach, and you actually feel because as soon as I seen it, like you don't. Matter of fact, you hit me up. Mm-hmm. I'm hitting you up on how you you know what, what's up with the weekend. Blah, blah, yeah, blah. we yeah. were like, hey, you see, you hit you see that Astro World. As soon mm-hmm. as I seen it, like I started getting sick to my stomach. Absolutely, especially absolutely. when you start reading the details of it. Mm. 
Um, for those of you who may not have heard, I don't know how you possibly could have escaped this information, but um, on Friday, what was it, November 5th, um, Travis Scott started day one of his two-day Astroworld Festival. It's an annual festival. Mm -hmm. um, it took place in Houston, Texas. And um, I guess everything was going well. I mean, SZA performed, Roddy Rich. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a number of people who performed throughout the day. Mm -hmm. But around 9 p.m. that night is when everything completely went mm -mm -mm. left. Um, complete chaos. Um, just complete chaos. And that was when Travis took the stage. Apparently, according to law enforcement, there was a surge, a, a mm -hmm. crowd surge. And if you have ever been in a crowd surge, it is the scariest Absolutely. shit yes. on earth. Yep. You yep. literally cannot control where no. you are being moved. Nope. You are literally being pushed and it's almost like being the only way I can describe it is like being in the ocean and trying to stand still when a wave hits you. Yeah, it's, it's that, with quicksand under your feet, though, with quicksand under your I feet. I personally experienced it. And it is it's, you. You hit that perfectly. That's exactly what it's like. It mm -hmm. is. It, it's it's that it's a messed up experience. It definitely it is. is. You never forget it. I mean, I, I've never been to that extreme, but I've been in a situation similar to it. But. It's, mm -hmm. it's horrible. They'll never, you know, anybody, like you said, condolences to everyone there because, you know, they, they're going to need their, like, just like that experience, just being there. It's just, it's horrible. It is. Um, so law enforcement said this surge took place mm -hmm. shortly after Travis hit the stage because, of course, he's the, the headlining act. He's the person that everyone is really, really there to see. Right? right. Crowd gets excited and they start surging forward. Now, because of the surge... And because of um, hundreds of people who literally snuck into the sold out festival. Mm -hmm. So you have 50,000 people who actually bought tickets. Then you have the people who bum rushed the gates mm -hmm. and just literally ran and snuck in. Mm -hmm. Then there was a tweet floating around. And I'm going to put the word allegedly in front of it because I have enough lawsuits to deal with that as it is. <laughs> but there was a tweet floating around where Travis Scott was like, yeah, we still letting the wild. We still sneaking the wild ones in. Okay. So he thought it was funny that additional people were still coming into a sold out event, which mm -hmm. is making it over capacity. And mm -hmm. anyone knows it could be over capacity in a bathroom. Solid. And now you're in a death trap. Solid. Absolutely. I'm so glad that you stressed that. And I've seen a lot of comments and a lot of ignorant things and blame and this, that and the other. And that's something that you said is it, that is extremely important. Mm -hmm. Capacity, period. Mm -hmm. Whether it's one or 100. One of the stories that I referenced in my coverage of Astro World, the young lady said it was so jam packed that wherever your feet were, that's it. You're not stepping forward. Mm -hmm. You're not stepping back. You're not stepping to the side. If you lift your arms up in the air, because, you know, for my crew, we throw our hands in the air and wave them like that's they just right. don't yeah. care. She said, if you put your arm up in the air, you can't bring it back down. She wow. said, if you tried to bring your arm back down, you are, you're either going to hit someone, choke someone, um, elbow someone. It was that tight. So that's she said she and her ridiculous. best friend, um, her best friend started having issues breathing. Mm -hmm. They course. tried to get out of the, the pit or wherever they were. She, she described it as drowning in humans mm -hmm. is the way she described it. She Sad. said she literally, she said at one point she fell. And she was laying on top of another dude who was already under everyone's feet. Mm, 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 mm. That's so um, sad. There, and, and here's the thing. As far as you touched on blame, um, I've heard a lot of different conversations when it comes to blame. Um, first and foremost, Travis Scott is going to be at the top of the totem pole. Mm -hmm. It's his event. He was on. He was the one headlining. He's the one on stage. Right. Then next is event promoters, right? Yeah. So then you have like your Live Nations and and whoever yep. else was involved in that. Yep. Next tier down is security, and then paramedics, yep. and so on and so down the pole, right? Absolutely. But for me, um. I asked God to check me a few times because mm -hmm. I felt so many different things about this whole thing mm -hmm. as far as blame is concerned, mm -hmm. because I'm having a hard time um, just processing the fact that Travis Scott was on stage and then up on a crane where he has the best view in the whole building. Absolutely. Yeah. And he could not see these ciphers of CPR yeah. going on. Like, y'all, yeah. literally 11 people went into cardiac arrest. Yeah. Well, eight, and, I think eight to 11 people went and, into cardiac. And that's a whole nother um, <clears throat> topic that we could talk about also. I mean, none of the I, none of the official reports have come back, but we all know what type of 
uh, event that was. We mm-hmm. all know what I hate to say this what Travis Scott promotes. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we're gonna find out a lot of people were high, a lot mm-hmm. of people were uh, acting the way they were acting because they were under the influence. Mm-hmm. Um, people, a lot of people are like, why aren't people reacting? I think some of those people that didn't react were under the influence mm-hmm. because it, it's, it's so many different. It's so elements. many different. Yeah, it it's, is. It, it's it is elements. so many. But the you know some of the videos that you see to me the most haunting video I saw was like where he's up on the thing Mm -hmm. and you actually see somebody's lifeless body being kind of handed over to someone Mm -hmm. and the music that he was actually singing. It sounds so demonic. Like I got creeped out because when he was doing somebody's body. uh, Yes. Yes. He was almost, it felt like a chain out. Yeah, it did. It did. It did. So I'm just like, this can't be going on. I felt like I was looking at something like in a movie, but Mm -hmm. I've never, ever, ever in my, we ain't going to, you know, put my age yeah. out there. Right. Years, many years I've been on this earth. I've ever, ever seen. We've had a lot of incidents and tragedies at different festivals. Mm-hmm. And this isn't the first incident that's happened at, right. at, at, at a Travis Scott Festival. Am I right? Mm-hmm. No, no, no. And, so, but it's it's the most it's the most deadly because right. Travis has been arrested before. Because right. here's where I blame. I, I place blame on Travis. All right. So. Playing devil's advocate, because Mm -hmm. I know there's lighting, there's, you know, the concert was at night, there's lights. And a lot of times people say when they're on stage performing, they can't see the audience. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Mm -hmm. even if we shoot Travis that bail alone, right, Mm -hmm. that he couldn't see into the audience, even though there's video of him looking dead into the audience. But we're going to say he couldn't (laughs) see into the audience. Right. Mm -hmm. Even if he if that was the case, Travis has a history of encouraging and inciting rage, um, rage, wild behavior. Like you can't run back to Twitter and hurry up and try to delete a tweet where you said we still sneaking the wild yeah. ones in after yeah. people have been killed and people yeah. have died. For me, the most haunting thing for me was seeing ciphers. Like the only ciphers I grew up on are rap ciphers. Yeah. I saw CPR yeah. ciphers. Yeah. Circles of people. There were teenagers out there doing CPR on people who were already deceased and mm-hmm. gone. I mm-hmm. saw the paramedics drop a girl who was unconscious on her head. It's like crazy. they literally tried to carry her over, I guess, the gate and mm-hmm. the gurney tipped. They literally dropped her on her head. I said, if she doesn't make it based off of whatever mm-hmm. had her passed out, she not going to make it from hitting her head on the concrete right. yeah. because they, when I, Carla, I'm telling you, they literally dropped her like a brick. Um, there was one girl said she passed out. She, mm-hmm. she passed out in the crowd. Mm-hmm. She woke up in another, uh, another place with a water bottle in her lap. Wow. And then she said, when she woke up, she said the paramedics that were there, um, weren't even administering CPR properly. And it's a lot of people who think they know CPR and they don't. They think all they got to do is chest compressions and press up and down and they break in your ribs and right. everything else because they don't know how to properly um, administer CPR. Here's my thing. That all the lives that were lost, <clears throat> I agree with you that there were a lot of elements at play. Alcohol, drugs, pills, um, a, a whole lot at play. And then you have the people who just came out for a good time and they got caught up in the middle yeah. of everything else. Right. Then you have the crowd surge because it's almost like when you teach your child a certain way to act. And when they see their mama, oh, this is the way I'm supposed yeah, to act. And absolutely. So when they see Travis, they like, oh, this is the way Travis right. wants us to act. Yep. They were not surging when SZA was on stage. Right. They were not raving when SZA was mm-hmm. on stage. They were not, mm-hmm. you know, so this is, to me, this is um, the end result of years and years and years of Travis teaching his fans how to behave in this manner. And then it just got out of control, beyond his control. For me, it hurt my heart to see young people literally begging and screaming and begging film and camera crews. Yeah, please stop the show. Please yeah. stop the show. And there is a video where Travis stops and says, who wants me to stop the show? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, mind you. So that is another indication that you knew something terribly wrong was happening somewhere. Right. right. 
Kylie posts a picture of the crowd. She's so hype about the crowd, but she's, I guess she didn't think about the fact that the photo that she posted of the crowd shows paramedics literally driving through the crowd trying to get to, yeah. to people. But that's what's the who, problem is like, not to cut you off. We're no, so bad. busy in our phones. Like people aren't even in the moment. You, I watch people. People are so into their phone. It, it, a whole scene could go on behind them and they literally don't come after the, don't, mm-hmm. don't come out of their phone. Mm-hmm. You know, that too. Travis is to blame, but it also puts a bigger problem, a bigger issue. And it shows that these venues and these festivals, they are not prepared like for emergencies, evacuation. Mm-hmm. They're not at all. Because let's say a fire breaks out. You're going to end up in that same yep. scenario. Mm-hmm. Um, how was the set built? Um, you know, I, like, why were they able to be, why were people being actually crushed against, like, it's so many, it, it's so many different things that are going to be exposed. And I hate to say this, but um, when Caucasian children die, oh, ch- oh, changes a lot are of made. heads are going to, yeah, absolutely. Heads are Absolutely. Roll. Absolutely. And it's so sad when I saw, like, um, the victims and it's like, oh my gosh, like, this 14. is so, yeah, yeah. And I'm not putting any blame, but I just remember, like, years ago being younger and, and and our concerts weren't like this but i just remember mm-hmm. like my parents everyone saying like you're not going to that show because sure ain't just a, you know it's sad it's so sad so you better you know. ll cool j yo ass yeah. down in the living room yeah exactly so you know my condolences just to everyone that yeah. is just such a tragic thing it is um just the videos the the attendees recounting things that they've seen, things that they've experienced, the fact that they had to have um, a a reunification center, like call this number if your child never came home Mm -hmm. from the concert Mm -hmm. or if a loved one never came home. Like that is nuts. And then you know what else Mm -hmm. is really mind blowing? You and I both could have been at that same festival, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Just depending on where we were located, we had two Absolutely. different experiences. Yeah. Just based off yeah. of where we was located yeah. in the crowd. That's so true. Because somebody came home like, that shit was lit. Yeah. And then somebody else I is hope planning. Not. Somebody else is planning <laughs> their their funeral arrangement. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's sad. I But I do know that this is going to change the game. And I have my own personal feelings about festivals. I mean, come on. Mm. You can go all the way back to like early days of Woodstock. and. Mm-hmm. and Mm-hmm. I'm and not a festival. Just, you know, yeah, I'm not a festival fan. That's mm-hmm. where I'm gonna stop with it. I mean, I'm mm-hmm. just, and that's all I'm gonna say. I'm if I don't have assigned seating, I'm not going. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I, I'm not. Exactly. If I don't have assigned seating, I'm exactly. not going. I'm not interested in no standing room only yeah. concert. No, I'm not, not interested in no standing room or standing festival. I'm not interested. Nah. I've never been to the Made in America not festival me. for that very nope. reason. Oh I'm gosh. not going to no festivals. Exactly. Um, just a few other things. With this Astro World thing, you know, I mean, we've been doing media now, what, 10 years, 11 years. Mm-hmm. The longer that you're in something, the more transparent it becomes to you. Mm-hmm. So Astro World went down. I woke up Saturday morning. It went down, it went down on Friday night. I woke up saturday morning to all kind of bad signals texts dms videos being sent to me emailed to me everything Mm -hmm. like yo this is happening now like this is what happened last night like this Mm -hmm. is serious this is a big deal so i'm like what so of course i go to social media because that's where you're going to get the true you know one marine said i've been in the core for seven years i did cpr more last night than i did in the core in seven years wow yeah that's you know a lot and So, you know, you had that element at play. And then I watched how the media moves. And we all know that there is a huge difference between black media and white media. Uh, Mainstream media and black media is what I'm (laughs) going to call it. But black media is mainstream, but y'all know they don't consider us that. Um, Mm -hmm. First, it was, you know, Travis hadn't said anything Mm -hmm. at this point. And then a headline comes out that says... There was a man in the crowd injecting people with drugs, like a serial Mm -hmm. injector who targeted a certain area of the concert. So you had someone who came out there with a hypodermic needle and was like, I'm just going to poke as many people (laughs) as I can and lay them down. Send them into cardiac Mm -hmm. arrest. Right. Mm -hmm. So once that narrative was thrown out and -hmm. then it turned into, oh, it said, a source close to the situation. Yeah. <laughs> um, a close source to the... That's code for Chris Jenner. 
<laughs> allegedly right so then mm. they said this person was out there pokey pokey poking and jabbing people the mm. crowd got scared and started running for safety which caused the surge okay mm. so y'all didn't think this all the way through in the meeting because the surge went towards the stage not away from right, it right right so y'all didn't think mm. that out through you know in your little <laughs> meeting of um your what is it called the damage control meeting right <laughs> so after that narrative came out is when travis released his statement Mm -hmm. See, he waited for that narrative mm -hmm. to get out yeah. there now. Because see, maybe the coast a little clear. Yeah. Let me feel. Yeah. Let me feel y'all out. <laughs> so then he releases his statement, says he's absolutely devastated, and I'm like, okay, but you was doing a robot. But I'm gonna let you be great because at the end right. of the day, I don't believe Travis Scott wanted anyone to die. But mm -hmm. I also believe a lot of times our carelessness and our recklessness and our lack of accountability mm -hmm. leads to situations like this. Absolutely. I feel like when. Once I don't I don't know how many people were out there as far as security and, and event coordinators and, and promoters and all that. But the moment there was one CPR cipher and I keep calling it a CPR cipher because it was literally yeah, bodies in a circle with people doing CPR. Yeah. in us. So the moment that anyone on an event planning level saw that CPR cipher, all that shit should have been shut down. Yeah. Music off, lights yeah. up. Listen, y'all, yeah. we got one more day. It's, it's going to be another one yeah. tomorrow. Y'all exactly. more than welcome to come back. Yeah. But we got to uh-uh. Yeah. Like, literally, I saw law enforcement and medics looking like deer in headlights. Yeah. They were overwhelmed. Yeah. They, were they were totally were, over overwhelmed. They were completely and totally overwhelmed. But that, to me, when those kids jumped up on that thing, and I know uh, a yeah, lot of times horrible. kids act crazy and they jump up on the cameras and all that. But that girl was literally begging. Yeah. The boy was begging. Yeah. She's like, there's dead people down yes. here. Yep. Get off the podium. Get off. Yeah. Or I'll push yep. you off or kick yeah, you off. Yeah, it was horrible. Get off. And then yeah. at that very moment while they were begging is when Travis is in the background like, who want me to stop mm -hmm. the show? So mm -hmm. he was aware that something terribly wrong is going on. Regardless of what, it was something going wrong. Something period. was going yeah. wrong. Now, yeah. at the same time, do you think Travis is desensitized? Because typically at festivals, people pass out. Yeah. It's, it's, it happens. But that's why I say the security. Now, I don't put that on Travis. I put that on the security team at that yep. point. Because they they should be able to communicate to one yeah. another. This is not a typical pass out. People are in and, cardiac arrest. And with the type of surveillance down. that we have in 2021, I, I just feel it's inexcusable. It is. It, it, it is. It is. It's mind blowing that something like that can literally happen in 2021. Yeah. Seriously. And you have no, you don't have any plan. There isn't any emergency. That's what it looked like. They were coming up as yeah. they were going along. They were just going along. When they dropped that girl, I said, these people do not know what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, the sad they part have, is they were, but to give them a little credit, they were nervous and scared. Like, think about it. Yes. They've never been through a situation like mm -mm. that. They thought they were coming out the jam and get a nice little check for doing security at a Travis Scott concert. Yeah. But the first indication, here's the thing. When those kids bum rushed that gate earlier that day. Everything should have shut down. Yeah, we checking tickets. We checking tickets and wristbands. That's if what you happens. don't have either, you gotta go. That's what happens when you're reactive instead of proactive. That's why I always literally preach proactive. If, if if the whole society, if this world was more proactive, there's so many situations that can be prevented. Mm -hmm. That Astro World tragedy could have been prevented. Period. Yep. From top to bottom. I just feel like there's something else I wanted to Okay, so the lawsuits have already begun. Mm -hmm. Of course, your boy Benjamin Crump in the mix. Good Lord Jesus! Yeah, he loves. He Listen, loves. the minute somebody be like, "Oh, R.I.P." Benjamin be like pulling up. <laughs> he got, bam, 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 bam. He got yeah. one of them horns that say. Bam, 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 da, 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 da. <laughs> he got one of them horns. Um, you know, it's like God darn Ben ain't gonna miss mm -hmm. no check. No, he's not. He not gonna miss I'm a wrongful death. At him now, and he ain't gonna miss no check. No. Um, Kylie, I felt like so white media so first we go with the narrative of the um serial poker right mm -hmm. then travis releases his statement then um here comes kylie no people magazine put out an article that said pregnant kylie is was was unharmed oh, in yeah. the in the that's so excuse insulting. me that is so insulting so y'all so, so y'all really Writing this article, Heartless. like for one hot second, we thought a pregnant Kylie Jenner and Stormy was in the middle of that mosh pit. And that's like, I feel like it's insulting to the family. It is. Like you totally disregarded God, all yeah. of the people who lost their lives because Kylie good. So why are y'all really when upset? When I seen that, I wanted, I was like, so 
<laughs> it's t- hello. It, it basically read, listen, I know eight to 11 people died or went into cardiac arrest, but Kylie, but Kylie Jenner is okay. But Kylie is okay. So y'all really shouldn't yeah, have anything to be upset that about. That is so hard. That's horrible. Insensitive. Oh, yeah. Very ignorant. Insensitive. Bottom. I said, what in the flame broiled That's some bottom hot... feeding. You talk about bottom okay. feeding shit. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that was horrible. So then Kylie released a statement, which I think she probably shouldn't have because that's going to be used in a court of law against Travis. But she tried to help the situation by saying neither she or nor or Travis. I don't I always get confused when I should say nor or or. I think it's <laughs> or. Um they had no idea that people had died until after the show was over and they saw it on the news. I don't know about that. <laughs> after She said the news? Wow. Yeah. That's a hot lie. That's a hot sure lie. I think she said That's yeah. a hot ass okay. lie. All right. All right. Damn, I'm like, I can't the, believe she said that. Like she really incriminated him and The her paramedics herself. didn't? The paramedics didn't alarm. I mean, it was a picture of paramedics in Listen, her picture. It was all over phones. Listen, they okay. seen that before. All There's right. all so many different ways they knew about right. that before the news. What I don't think is cool is now people are wishing death upon, upon Stormy. Now people are coming after um, Kylie and Stormy with just like just vicious comments and mm-hmm. and things of that nature. And it's like, come on, y'all, like. As bad as this thing is, spewing hate and and that type of language towards other people and wishing death on other people only inflames the situation. It does not make it better. But before we end this segment, because, you know, there, we could go on and on about it. But, I mean, they're mm-hmm. doing enough of that in the media. But I just wanted to take a moment to share my thoughts on it, get your thoughts on it, because I yeah. know I, I love to hear your perspective on things. Um, but before we go, I just want to say shout out to Cat Williams because Cat Williams did. Mm-hmm. You know he's doing his World War Three tour. Girl, his yes, comedy I tour. watched it. Oh yeah, I started watching it too. Shout out for that link. <laughs> shout out. <laughs> I mean, we love you, Cat, but you do know that people putting it on YouTube. You are fully aware because I saw a clip of you saying, "You know, people putting it on YouTube." Listen, it was good. Yes, yes. So on Saturday night. Um, the day after when he was performing in Kentucky, he had um, one of his fans had a medical emergency in the audience. Um, I guess someone fainted, passed out something. Cat Williams completely stopped his show. Mm-hmm. When I say completely stopped the show, I'm talking about he stopped the show and, and he told he shut it down and he said, I'm sorry um, if I won't move on, but that ish that happened, yeah, that Astro World shit. Mm-hmm. He said, that means we can't never continue until we know somebody MF and good. So he wow. basically saying, like, he said, I'm not leaving here with nothing on my conscience. He completely wow. stopped that show until the paramedics checked wow. or whoever checked on that woman and helped her out of the venue. And then he continued to show. Good for him. And Shout as they the were. Cat. Yep. And as they were leading her out, he said, yeah, we made right. We made the right decision. I know Ugh, that's we right. made the right decision. OK. So he stood by what he said. And, and my thing is that just showed that it only takes. If you just care enough to take a moment to make sure someone else yep. is all right, it can make all the difference in the world. Yep. There was another video floating around, and I'm not even really that up on him. I know you're a little more up on Playboy Cardi. Oh, it was a clip of him completely Rage. stop stopping his show. Did he? Said, he? I, he said wow. y'all. He said y'all got to back up. He said y'all got to okay. everybody take okay. one step back. Okay. He was like, y'all, everybody take one step back. Everybody back up. He was like, they, because someone came on stage, whispered in his ear, like okay. they walling. Okay. And I don't okay. understand why that didn't happen on Friday night. But no, I'm, I'm like, I'm glad you told me that because for, oh, that was, I'm so glad you said that. That Play Bacardi's another one. His music mm-hmm. is full of rage, mm-hmm. kind of incites it and stuff like that. But he draw from what you're saying to me, he draws the line there. He's mm-hmm. all observing of it and he's holding himself accountable. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let me and yep. I love that. I love to hear that. Shout mm-hmm. out to play. Well, okay. Yep. I she love did. to hear that. But see, that may I don't know exactly where he was or what he was performing, if it was his show, if he was a part of a festival. Okay. But that also to me ties into the whole the whole um unit. Because the man with the headset 
yeah. came out and tapped him like they yeah. walling. It's the unit. It's the it's, unit. It it's is. The unit. It ha- you have to be well organized mm-hmm. for when you larger the crowd, right? Mm-hmm. You got to be well oiled machine because mm-hmm. at any time anything can you know break out. Like it's like a, a little fire could break out over here. A fire mm-hmm. could break out there, and you have to be able to react to all those put all of those fires out. Yep. And and it's we're, so no one will be hurt. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing. Like safety's always first. So imagine. You lose your life at a concert. Yeah. Like it's it's sad. Huh? You know, yeah. so again, our sincerest condolences to everyone impacted by this tragedy at Astro World. Um, I just can't imagine. Um, I've seen videos that have sat and haunted my spirit. I've read things that have just hurt my soul. Um, just continue to pray for yeah. everyone impacted by this because this Astro World stuff is not going anywhere no time soon. No. We are just scratching the surface with yep. this. And like you said, heads are going to roll because we lost oh, yeah. a lot of Caucasian children out there. Yeah. Heads are going to roll. Yeah. And you don't know heads what some of the roll. injuries, like you still don't know how it's going to affect. We don't know what happened to the others that were injured. Yep. Yeah, because the one girl said she looked down and realized they were standing on top of people. They weren't standing on the ground. They were standing on top of That's people. That's horrible. That is horrible. You know, that's and so then, sad. Yeah, it should it's, never take place in the United States. Not never, never take place, Mm-mm. or anywhere for that matter. Lord have mercy. Yeah. Okay, guys, so we are going to go ahead and take a break, and um, when we come back, we got another big topic to tackle before we get into the shenanigans and tomfoolery. When we return, mm-hmm. we will be talking about Henry Ruggs the Third and mm-hmm. um, yeah. the fatal. Um, car crash that he was involved in last week all right so go ahead and grab a drink of water use the bathroom text a friend tell him to tune into the icc podcast because we digging in today all right we'll be right back okay guys we are back um carla another heavy story this time coming out of las vegas uh henry ruggs the third former now former um, Raiders NFL player. Um, he was involved in a fatal car accident. Now, this one right here truly, truly sent me um, mm-hmm. because, again, we're talking about tragedies that could have been avoided. Yeah. Um, according to the report, um, Henry Ruggs III was driving at speeds of up to 156 miles per hour mm-hmm. in his Corvette when he slammed into the back of a RAV4. Mm -hmm. And um, when he slammed into the back of the RAV4, the RAV4 um, caught on fire, um, killing the young lady inside. And her dog was in there as well. And um, again, another totally preventable uh, tragedy. Um, Henry's girlfriend was also his girlfriend and the mother of his child was also in the vehicle at the time of the accident. Um, Henry is facing felony charges, including DUI, um, mm-hmm. resulting in death. So um, this situation is just... Huh. He has some serious charges. They, like, there are some serious charges, and he deserves every one. He, he deserves every one of them. I don't know, like, how many... I don't know. What is it with athletes, pro athletes, sports cars, and speed? Mm-hmm. Um... I mean, we've seen so many examples of um, athletes who have either killed themselves due to mm-hmm. excessive speed in the sports cars or themselves and others or just others. I mean, honestly, you can go all the way back. I can think of like so many athletes. NFL more in my head than anything. That's what I'm sitting here. I'm actually ready to look it up. But I feel like it's a, a, a NFL thing more than anything that we've mm-hmm. seen. And I just I don't understand when I saw the actual like. Uh, just how fast he was going I, I, I couldn't believe it I'm like that's just because I'm I, I come from like a place where like I feel like certain vehicles should be just governed period like mm-hmm. because I don't think any vehicle should be allowed to go that fast on a public street absolutely um, what, it should what, be governed what is the point of making a vehicle that can go 156 miles per unless hour? you're in the you know professional race car driver right yeah absolutely you know they have speed limits for a reason because after a certain speed, you can't control. Okay, 
And it's so heartbreaking because, I, like, it makes me feel so bad because I'm not wishing death on him. But it's just like, man, like, how did you survive? It, it, how did you survive? It's always Lord, forgive me. God, forgive no, no, me. No, for no, like, no, 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 no. I, I understand what you mean. And, and hopefully our listeners understand, too, because typically it is always the person who causes the accident, who walks away with the least yes. amount of injuries. Yes. Yep. Typically, it is always like that. And I and don't I mean, know. I, I, I don't. Well, it's a reason behind the alcohol thing, right? Like, I do know the reason behind that. Because with alcohol, when you're like drunk, you're literally like your body is so relaxed. You're in such a state that a lot of times mm -hmm. when there's an impact, your body's kind of where like, you know, when you're not, when you're sober and you you're brace. prepared, you brought absolutely. And bracing actually is what causes more injuries than, but they, I mean, that accident, they were hit, they were rear ended and it just went into, this is something totally different. That was just horrible. But I think him being drunk is played a big part in his survival. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, the victim uh, was a 23-year-old young lady by the name of Tina Tinter, so 23 sad. years old. Um, a security guard at a nearby condominium complex mm -hmm. heard the crash. When he got over, he got, hopped in his car and went over. When he got there, he actually heard Tina in the vehicle screaming. He was ah. trying to get her out of the car, but the car in, went up in flames. So That's when the horrible. car went up in flames, he, of course, he had to back up and get away from the vehicle because of the flames. And upon doing that, she perished in the fire. That's sad. Yeah. So she perished in the fire, which is, is just super, super sad. And, it is. And it's, it's really... Mm. It's really sad to know, you know, a lot of times when people perish in a car accident, my mom died in a, in a horrific car accident. Yeah, and a lot of times so when sad. people perish in car accidents, you just you want to make like just Lord, please let them not have suffered. Like, right. just let it. Right. But for him to confirm that he heard her in there screaming. Mm. And then it's like and then there was a video of Henry and um, his girlfriend and his girlfriend. um her nickname is Rudy. Her name is Kiara uh, Kilgo Washington. Um, you know, she's on the side of the road comforting him and, and mm. screaming for someone to get, you know, paramedics there. But he's 22 years old. He's 22 mm -hmm. years old. And for me, it's almost like he threw he not only did he take a life, but he threw his own life away. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, you were afforded the blessing of being a 22 year old in the NFL mm -hmm. It's probably some little boy in his neighborhood right now. I think 15, that's the problem. 16, 15, 16 years old that could play football way better than you, right. but you, the Lord blessed you with that opportunity and you just squandered it. But I think that's the problem because if you look at really think about a 22 year old mind, mm -hmm. um, uh, that's why I'm like an advocate for like, yeah, they need to go to college four years before they become a professional athlete. Because depending on what type of background you came up, like you came from, you know, he's 22. Fast cars, girls. I'm just like he I'm not making excuses, but I like mm -hmm. I get it. Like, I, I feel like we, we give 22 year olds, especially 22 year old boys. They ain't yeah. men. They not men. Yeah, they're they not boys. men. They boys. And he made a boy. And, and unfortunately, a boy. um made a decision but he gonna have to pay for it like a man you know what i'm saying so it's you know when 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 i heard about this car accident i don't know my first thought was what was kiara saying or doing when he was driving 156 miles per hour wasn't it a video out there maybe i'm wrong but i thought it was like a video floating around where she was like actually telling him to slow down they was actually like laughing and she was on her phone like it was all fun and games like music was playing and then i thought there was like i think so oh, really? i gotta look that back up where she was like slow down really i i i, wow. I swear i seen the video floating around i need to try to find that again that's gonna be you know how digging for that stuff yeah i'm gonna see if i can but yes so, so um, um, Henry made his first court appearance on um, Wednesday, November 3rd. Of course, he came to court with the neck brace on and he was in a wheelchair. Um, mm. I don't know the extent of his injuries, but I'm guessing if he was able to appear in court, they were mild in comparison to what Tina Tentor um, experienced. Oh, yeah. um, these judges are wild, yo. Like, I feel like. His celebrity still came into play because even at the scene yep. of the crime, yep. there was a 
guy telling the officer, oh, he played for the Raiders. Mm -hmm. That's that's such and such who played for the Raiders. Mm -hmm. And the judge gave him a bail of $150,000, which is chump change to this kid. That's um, that's, that's, wow. That's unreal. Let him out on bail Mm -hmm. and just ordered him to abstain from alcohol, other controlled substances. Of course, he had to submit his passport. Um, surrender, excuse me, surrender his passport. And then he's mm. not, a, excuse me, he's not allowed to drive. Oh, okay. So meanwhile, Tina's family is like, so sad. Huh? So he is due back in court on this Wednesday, the mm. 10th, but a hundred, like, t- isn't that just a th- 1,500? That, that, wait, you said 150,000? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It is. Wait, ten percent. Yeah, wait. What's ten percent of one hundred fifty thousand? So wait, we drop. Like, let's just drop one O off, right? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. not. That's nuts. I know people that got like drug charges. I know personally that had <laughs> higher bail than that. No, that's I think it. that's fifteen thousand, right? Fifteen thousand. Yeah, that's why I was saying, isn't it a little 000. more than that? I'm Child, not listen, listen. I ain't good with the percentages. <laughs> wait, listen, wait. I slept through that whole <laughs> portion of what third grade? When you wait, start learning, wait. I tell people, wait, to admit it. wait. Don't ask the fact me for that, no percentages. Wait, though. wait, wait. <laughs> the fact that both of us said listen at the same time when we realized we can't do math. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I'm trying to tell you, not that percentage. Now, if it, not percentages. Percentages but 10% fractions, the easy one. Ten percent the one you just dropped a zero. That's why I'm like, <laughs> that's, the, that's the easy one. And yeah, we sit here talking. It's fifteen thousand. Yeah, wait, wait. it's fifteen thousand. We sit here talking about carry the one. We talk about fifteen hundred. We talk about carry the one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Divided by no, yeah. So fifteen, okay. fifteen thousand. But, but that's still, still that. Uh, listen, a drop in the bucket. I know people that got way a lot okay. more. Okay. Just for had that been you or me, we yep. would still be sitting in jail. Yeah, ain't gonna yeah. be no bail. No, nah, someone that's died. Horrible. Someone that's died. Horrible. Someone died. It wasn't you know just um, a happenstance type of car accident where something just you know. Where one person didn't see someone else, or you know, right. or something. No, you were you were breaking the law in multiple ways. Absolutely, multiple ways, yep. and yep. you know. So the Raiders wasted no time dropping his black tail from that team. They was like, listen, <laughs> you know, they announced that he was dropped from the team, and fans, Raiders fans, actually were upset about that and pushed back. They were like, mm-hmm. you know, he, you know. He, hear everything out y'all jump into no there's not really much to jump to conclusions on this one right here people listen it's not about a game it's not always about a game no that's the thing i people are so just selfish that's so selfish my question would be would it be that same energy if If it was your family okay there it is all right just asking just asking for a friend y'all gotta do better we definitely, definitely have to do better. Um, so again, I just want to send my condolences to the family of Tina Tenter, um, everyone who was impacted by this senseless tragedy, because this was absolutely senseless. And again, we're talking about preventable tragedies, preventable. Mm-hmm. You know, all he had to do was let let Kiara drive. Give the keys to Rudy. Let her drive. Why are oh, you intoxicated? There it is. Just slow down. No, no, no. I'm going to say give the keys to her because his alcohol. um, Oh, yeah. That was ridiculous with his alcohol. That alone should have got him at least. Seriously, he should. I feel like he shouldn't even have got bail. Double the legal limit for the state of Nevada. And you know Nevada going to let you get twisted. You understand? Yes. Nevada going to let you get twisted. But you were double the legal limit and you were driving 156 miles per hour and then had the nerve to try to slow down. I can't Um, believe it. And only manage, I believe, to slow down to 127 miles per hour before mm-hmm. slamming into the back of this young lady's car and changing mm-hmm. her family's life forever. Yep, so, nice. you know, just just super, super sad. Again, totally, yeah. totally preventable. Yeah. But, okay, so let's shift gears um, mm-hmm. and let's run through a few quick stories before we take our next break. Um, congratulations to Cardi B. She is set to host the 2021 American Music Awards. Okay. So that's going to be interesting. And Cardi will be the, f- I think this is the fifth year in a row a woman of color has hosted. 
the awards. So okay. the American Music Awards trying to make a little statement there. Oh, yeah. I see y'all make a little steady statement. And um, yeah, and Cardi, not only is she hosting, but she is up for three awards. Um, she's up for a uh, favorite female hip hop artist, favorite music video for and it's up and it's stuck and it's up and it's stuck. <laughs> and um, she's also up for favorite hip hop song for and it's up. And it's stuck and it's stuck and it's stuck. I'm not gonna grab my microphone today on y'all, or do you want me to grab the microphone? Because just let me know. It's still early. It's still early. We got I'm about time. To say it's still early, y'all. Y'all know it's gonna come out before it's all We over. got time. <laughs> okay. Um, I also would like to send up some prayers to the Reverend Jesse Jackson. Um, he yeah. was hospitalized on, I believe it was November 2nd. Now, Jesse Jackson went down to Howard University um, to visit with the students who are protesting the house, mm. the unsafe housing conditions. And he fell. And when he fell, he hit his head. Yeah. And that's what concerns me. Yeah. Um, that he hit his head so they went ahead <clears throat> excuse me they went ahead and took him to the hospital howard university hospital um for him to undergo test he did get a ct scan it came back clean thank god um but yes. they did definitely keep him overnight for further observation yeah. so you know um i don't know if many of you know but um reverend jesse jackson was diagnosed with parkinson's and um, mm. so, you know, he's also a dealing to with the head. Wouldn't have, it's not that's, great. That's my yeah. point. Yep, exactly. And mm. he's 80 years old. Like he's fragile. Yeah. Like we have to wrap him in bubble wrap now. Yeah, yes. Yeah, we do. I love how you said that is so mm -hmm. true. We do. We yeah. got to we got to take care of him. You know, mm -hmm. it's bubble wrap time. Yeah, so, you know, I know. It, I, it, listen, you'll be fine. Reverend Jackson, because it's wintertime. That bubble wrap will keep you secured and, you know, insulated. <laughs> so, um, you know, just sending prayers to him. And um, because, you know, earlier yeah. this year, he and his wife were hospitalized with COVID. Yeah. They both had breakthrough COVID. So, listen, when I tell you that that is a resilient man. Oh, yeah. He is a resilient man. So, yes. we just need to wrap him in some bubble wrap now. Because he done, look, we done gave you three chances. <laughs> okay. So, we're going to put you in the bubble wrap before we get to the third chance. Okay? Yes, yes. So, yes. we have to keep Keep you safe, Reverend Jackson. So my prayers and my love to him and his family um, as he recovers from the fall. Um, let's see. What else? Oh, well, let's slide back over to the NFL. Odell Beckham Jr. Mm -hmm. The Cleveland Browns went ahead and released him this <laughs> last week. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Wow. Because, you know, Odell had a great run. No, because it's like... <laughs> Just I feel like me. Odell Beckham, like, when you look at, like, his career, I just feel like I've heard more about Odell dancing, antics, and stuff like that more than I've actually heard about his stats and his numbers yeah. on the field. Like, seriously. Yeah. And yeah. I hate to say, I, I, when I hear his name, I giggle, because it's almost like his career is kind of like a joke. And I, maybe that, I, don't hate me for, the, like, all the Beckham fans and stuff, but it, it, honestly, that's just... I giggle when I hear stuff about Odell Beckham. <laughs> yeah, you literally just giggle. Yeah. Like, yeah, he's like, I don't yeah. know. But the irony of all of it is they've released him on his birthday. Oh, snap. So I don't oh, know if that's that was like a... That's kind of messed up. Oh. Well, I don't know if it was a blessing because if he wanted off the team, then that was a That's what I'm going to ask. Did he want off? Because I'm like behind. I'm not really like up to date know. with NFL. You man. know, I don't know that much. Yeah. I was just trying to... I was trying to flex my little uh, sports <laughs> muscle by even reporting on it. Now you want to try to throw me under the bus like, well, did he want off the team? Girl, don't nobody know all that. I'm just trying to tell you that he got dropped. <laughs> <laughs> now you gonna try to put me no, on the spot like, no, I like I'm deep in this thing. I didn't. I ain't want. To. Come on now. <laughs> you know my sports is limited. I'm gonna tell you who who is cute in a jersey. That's Word all. right. That's all I got for you. Oh, who man. cute in a jersey? Yes, yes, yes. Um, girl, you know they was. Uh, no. I, which 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 one of y'all was out here sending uh, death threats to Ayala Banza? Oh, I know who the hell. Yo, you got to be a real special person to send a death threat to Ayala. <laughs> Seriously, like who is it? I need I need somebody to find out who's really like really really hit us up and let us know who's doing it because I can't even believe that. Really, beloveds, beloveds, right. <laughs> really, beloveds, Word. really. Not on my watch. <laughs> <laughs> 
before you sent a death threat to Ayala Van Zandt. This woman was just out here doing her best to try yes. to help people fix their lives. Now, what I know y'all may not have felt like she was fixing people's lives. And I know some of y'all still haven't forgiven her for that DMX interview. But what I'm what saying is, like you damn. ain't got the threat in the woman. She said that the death threats mm. were one of the reasons, you know, I mean, she had other reasons why she wanted to leave the show. But death threats was pretty high on the list. That's crazy to me. Not Honestly. I mean, Brenda you got some Ayala. Pure, yeah, you got some pure hate in your heart. You want to say her like you just you you just uh like a I only had a word for her. Like God damn, how you going? How you send a death threat to Ayala? Like seriously, that's like sending death threats to like. Well, I don't, even know. don't want to put her up there with like Mother Teresa or the Pope or nothing, but like she's only here to help. Like, what could you possibly like? We listen just because you don't agree with her method or how she goes about helping people. Right. Don't mean she got to go to the crossroads with Uncle that's, Charles, yeah, y'all. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Damn. Oh, and I'm gonna wow. miss everybody. <laughs> like, oh, leave yeah, her I mean, alone. I couldn't believe it when I, I first see why seen she that. left and didn't care. Yeah, for real. Now I'm mad because I ain't got nothing to watch on Saturday night. Get on, <laughs> get on my nerves yep. you know how much therapy i was doing at home watching along with that thing y'all don't yeah. ruin that for me but what you where you think the most her interviews where do you think the death threats came of course dmx but do you think mm -hmm. anywhere like i can't imagine like who else it's been a few because it's karuchi like, <laughs> <laughs> like who else i'm, I'm about to, to i'm about to mute your ass in a minute keep playing <laughs> karuchi <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah i'm just but no just, okay re, um i have seen some interviews mm -hmm. where she got spicy remember she called <laughs> remember she called nephew a gutter oh snipe? yeah 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 <laughs> now see nephew now nah, i ain't gonna hold you like i ain't talking about no death threats <laughs> but i could see people being up in her yeah you know i mean like in my, <laughs> and she went too far with that she was she, she, she did, did too, she called i forgot gutter all snipe. about that yeah that's the one <laughs> That was a and moment, maybe, wasn't it? That was a what? moment. She, she might have got one from Nuffy herself. That was a moment. Yeah, that was a moment. She called the girl the damn gutter snipe. Okay. Never heard a word in my life. No, that. not not until then. Ayala yeah. gonna learn you. One thing she gonna learn you some. <laughs> she gonna need some vocabulary. <laughs> oh, um, okay, so Will Smith's book is coming. Mm -hmm. I believe it is set to drop on the ninth. I believe. Mm -hmm. um, if not, you could visit Ice Cream. Oh, you know what? So tomorrow. Oh, shoot. Today? Because <laughs> you know the podcast yeah. come out on the ninth. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So you're like, <laughs> you mean today? <laughs> Hold on. Let me see. When does book come out? For some reason, I feel like it come out tomorrow. Yeah. Today, the ninth. Yeah, because right. if you're listening to this, <laughs> you, it should be the ninth. Right. So the book will be <laughs> out. Um, you can go ahead and order your copy um, through icecreamcombos.com. But listen, Will Smith has been out here talking to talk with this book. Now, he promised to lay it all on the table. Now, last week, we talked about the oversharing from Jada. Mm -hmm. So now that Will is promoting this book, Will then got in his oversharing bag, too. Yeah. So first, he talked about how he fell in love with his co-star on Six Degrees of Separation because he was doing method acting. And then the next thing you know, he fell in love with her while he was married to Cherie. Mm. Then he went on to talk about, um, you know, his childhood, his father, because his father was alcoholic and apparently very abusive to his mother. Mm -hmm. He saw his father strike his mother. And, you know, as a young child, he kind of felt helpless. And he said that when one day he was when he gets big enough and he's not a coward anymore, he's going to avenge his mother. So Will shared in the book and the excerpt has started making its way across um, media outlets and headlines where he contemplated killing his dad once his dad was wheelchair bound and stricken with cancer. He mm -hmm. said he was pushing him past the stairwell and he, you know, dark thoughts came over him about, you know, hey, this might be the moment you can avenge your mama by pushing wow. your daddy down the steps. And he was like, listen, I'm a Hollywood star. He was like. I would have gave an Oscar winning performance of how my dad fell down them steps and <laughs> no one would Damn. have ever believed that I was the one, you know, that I had killed my father. And I wow. was like, you know, Will, that's a little unsettling. But at the same time, <laughs> it's just, it's like the same it's time, disturbing, Will, but it's kind of like, kind of disturbing, Willard. <laughs> um, but at the same time, I will I am going to go on record and say I have. I'm not going to say I have never had a thought of, you know, kind of 
smudging somebody out at one point in time in my life. Now, I didn't act mm. on it. That's why I'm still here to do this <laughs> podcast. But, um, you know, those thoughts are tricky. Those thoughts are really tricky. Yeah, that's rough. Yeah, yeah. that's rough. But like the positive thoughts. <laughs> if you don't <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> typically if you don't act on it within the first three minutes it'll pass wow yeah that's why i'm like wait a minute <laughs> just just sit through it if you have a really really bad thought just sit through it, it yeah. eventually it'll pass i'm so glad he didn't do that because that's like God, i don't yeah. believe in kicking a man when he's down Mm-mm. you know he's in a wheelchair at this point i'm saying <laughs> i am <laughs> saying like yeah. good grief and thank you know, god we didn't yeah and his mother would ultimately wouldn't have wanted that you know no. what I mean? Um, no. Because she's a, she's a, a wonderful lady. She wouldn't have wanted that for her yeah. son. And then, you know, a lot of times in anger, we do things that we don't think about how we're going to feel once we settle down. Yeah. And then it starts sitting in our spirit and our conscience yeah. and all that. We don't think about the after effect of us dealing yeah. with it and suffering with it. So That's the problem on acting off of emotion. Acting off of yeah. emotion. So I will say that I appreciate him sharing some things because I feel like... Will is going to be super transparent in this book. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm intrigued and I want to read. I feel like he's going to be super okay. transparent in this book. And I feel like his transparency will actually help others. Mm-hmm. Um, but still, some things just need to be kept to itself. I saw a headline yesterday that Will said him and Jada have fantastical sex. And I was like, here oh we go again. Gosh. Yeah. Here we go again. Yeah. Yeah. That's. I, listen, you know. I'm like, show me. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. heard enough about it, right? I don't believe you. I need to see. I'll talk about it. Be about it, right? Let me see. Let me show me what you're working with. Show me. Yeah, if you can't show me at this point, I don't care. Now, just just let me mind my business. Okay, stop disturbing me with this stuff. Um, can we talk about Karen Rogers? I'm sorry, Aaron Rogers. You know what, Carla? Uh, That ain't ain't right. What are your thoughts on this? Because you know, Aaron. I watched the man literally sit up and tell a hot, bald face, bold face lie uh, regarding his vaccination status. Mm. And now all of a sudden he's allergic. And that's why he couldn't take the vaccine because the vaccines contain something that he's allergic to. But my thing is, bruh, you sat up and lied Mm -hmm. like you literally just lie they out here raking Kyrie over the coals and killing this man in every way shape or form as far as his um his reputation and who Mm -hmm. he is is concerned and we watched you lie he lied I I got a different opinion I think Aaron Rodgers is a smart man he he actually watched First of all, like, I, you know how I feel about it. He watched the slaughter of Kyrie. He watched what unvaccinated athletes go through. So I'm not saying you should lie. Like, he's totally wrong, like, for the lie. But I can understand why he lied. I totally mm. get why he lied. Totally mm. get it. You know, it's a war against people who are not vaccinated in this country. Point blank, period. There's mm-hmm. literally a war against it. I've read, I've read the headlines that said war against the unvaccinated. I was like, damn. I turned to uh, my grandma was like, did you know it's a war against this? <laughs> it's a like, war going on hey, outside. Yeah. I, and, you know, I freely said, you know, some people are going around. I know a couple people that are unvaccinated that, that tell people that they are because they feel uncomfortable in the situation. Wow. No. I, it is wow. what it is. He shouldn't have lied. He shouldn't have lied. And now that allergic shit, like, that's all BS. Just say you morally don't believe in it. Mm -hmm. Period. Point blank, period. And accept the fines or Mm -hmm. whatever the punishment or whatever. You know, you just have to deal with it. Like, that's the thing. Like, no matter what your stance is on it, you you have to be accountable. Like, Mm -hmm. regardless. You got to be accountable. A lot don't care who tell it, huh? Yeah. A lot don't care. But what got me was (laughs) with... When he when he got busted, he was like, "Look, I'm allergic." Yeah, just, so you just, gotta try to clean it up now. <laughs> you gotta clean. Hey, how many of y'all been caught? We all have been caught in a lie. You ever get caught in a lie and you really mm. like, you know, you should just fold, right? Mm-hmm. And you, you just, just keep fold. going. Yeah, you just keep going. And like you said, a lie don't care who tell it. And then once they don't think about a lie, you gotta keep lying and keep. Then you gotta remember it. So. Yo, you said yeah. <laughs> some people just don't fold. Like, yeah, they, I, I, some fold people will go that will not go down, and that's him. He ain't going mm-hmm. down. He like, I ain't going down on the field, and I'm damn sure ain't going down on this lie. I'm gonna fight this thing to the <laughs> end. 
You hear me? Listen, I'm going all the way with this. But no, I totally get what you're saying. And the way Kyrie. And it also shows you the difference in the mm. media. The media. Mm. It, 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 it's so mm. obvious with this, isn't it? it? It's so obvious with so many things when you're talking about people of color yeah. versus, um, you know, Caucasian people. Like, it's, yeah. it's the line is so clear. And like, it's not, even, yes. it's not even murky. It's or not smoky. hidden anymore. It's not. That, you mm-hmm. hit it right on the head. Not at all. Mm-mm. You know, not at all. I'm talking so. about it is clean, clear cut. Yep. yep, it really is. But you know, shout out to <sighs> that was like the like that. That was he got the lie of the year on that one. I think. Yeah, he got he it. Got he tried to anyway. He got that. He might not get a Super Bowl ring, but he gonna get the super lie <laughs> ring. He got that. He got that. Yeah, yeah. So you know, um, the Ahmad Aubrey, the trial oh, yeah. for the murderers of Ahmad Aubrey started. And, you know, every time something like this comes along, we always hope for justice. Mm-hmm. And in despite how open and closed the case is, mm-hmm. there's always a reminder that there is justice mm-hmm. and just us. Oh, yeah. And this is a clear case of it being just us mm-hmm. once again, yep. because the judge in the case noted on record that there is a clear case of um, jury pool discrimination, like racial discrimination Mm -hmm. in the jury pool, but Mm -hmm. I'll allow the trial to move forward. I mean, it's clear, it's clear cut, but you know, we're going to go ahead anyway. We're going to go ahead anyway, because we already know how this thing going to happen anyway. The jury, um, Intentional discrimination. I want to make sure I say it correctly. Mm -hmm. The judge acknowledged the intentional discrimination on the part of the defense to strike every black juror that they could possibly Mm -hmm. strike from the case. But then the judge doubled down and said, well, you know, their reasons for striking the black people were valid. So I'm going to just let it move forward, even though there's a, a a trial for three men is a tr- uh, hold on, Bessie. I'm going to say this real quick. Mm-hmm. A trial for three men accused of killing Ahmad Aubrey based off of the fact just racial discrimination. Y'all, uh, he couldn't have been a jogger just looking at a new property because he was black. He had to be robbing a place. So they hunted him down and killed him. So you are going. So there we're looking at a racial hate case, right? A hate crime. But you put 11 white folks on the jury and one black person. Okay, carry on. Go ahead. Now, yeah, because that, and that's, I'm confused about that. And then, like, you were saying about, okay, he's, he's making all these excuses and reasons. But if you're saying it's, a, it's intentional discrimination, that means there is an intent mm-hmm. to discriminate, right? Okay. We all, we all mm-hmm. know, like, basic. Mm-hmm. So, how is there an excuse for that, too? How are they federally, it's a hate crime, but in the state of Georgia, it's not, they're not being charged as a hate crime. Am I correct? Yeah, I think the Department of Defense had to step in for that. I don't understand that, though. How were they federally? Because Georgia never. Yeah, Georgia's, (sighs) your state. Georgia, wow. Your state, man. Yeah, that's a lot. And this is why you have to get out. People, we only want to come out every four years in numbers. You have to come out. We vote for judges. Mm -hmm. Judges are, we have Mm -hmm. to remove them. Mm -hmm. That's why it's Mm -hmm. so important. Stop ignoring these in between elections. Stop. This is what happens. Judges are the ones that make the final decision. And that is why I made it a point to note Judge Timothy Walmsley, (laughs) W-A-L-M-S-L-E-Y. Make sure you remember it on whatever ballot he pops up on. (laughs) Yes. Yes. I made sure to notate his name. He not just going to be the judge on the trial. No, he is Judge Timothy. Yes. They may call him yes. Tim Tim around his way. <laughs> Timothy Walmsley, W A L M S L E Y. But yes. I'll re- I'll remind you at election time because listen, I don't want to be this person. But I literally looked at my husband and said, if these men get away with killing a mob, burn the whole thing down. I Remember Firestarter, right. burn it all yeah. down, Charlie. <laughs> Charlie, burn them all. No, that's right. I take that no. back in case the right, wrong people listen. I know, yeah, but, right? You never you know. know. You never know. You never know. Yeah, you we just know. playing. We, <laughs> I'm kidding. Like I, I, I'm, I'm just Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> 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 I'm just Aaron Rodgers. I like that. All. I like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just Aaron Rodgers. Okay, so Bestie, let's go ahead and um, 
ICC friends, we're going to go ahead and take another break. And when we come back, I want to get into the story that um, inspired the headline for today's podcast. I want to talk about Cash Doll and um, her good news. Mm -hmm. I also want to talk about The Harder They Fall, which has been released on Netflix, which is a freaking fantabulous movie but i want to talk about um some struggles lakeith had while filming the show and okay. then uh we'll touch on kanye and get the heck up out of here so let's go ahead and take a break and we'll be right back all right icc friends we are back and thank you so much for listening to the podcast we hope you are enjoying it thus far so um carla i want to talk mm -hmm. about joe budden because joe budden inspired the title of today's podcast <laughs> context matters mm -hmm. so joe bud was trending in the streets of twitter and i was mm -hmm. like okay well what joe did now because you know i do listen to the joe button podcast on a regular basis mm -hmm. so i'm like well what joe done did now girl i go into twitter and see joe button is bisexual yeah. i said joe button bisexual i didn't know joe button was bisexual <laughs> Ain't nobody tell me nothing. <laughs> so I'm like, well, when did who outed? My first question was, who outed him? Uh, who outed right? him? Right? right. So then I'm like, well, how did I miss this memo? Like, when did Joe say he was by Sesha? And mm. then they pulled a clip from the podcast. And it was mm -hmm. a clip where Joe was talking about the LGBTQ community um, forgiving the baby. Mm -hmm. and allowing him basically essentially signing his permission slip for him to perform at Rolling Loud. Did we mm -hmm. talk about that last week on the podcast? Um, I don't think so. Okay. I can't remember. I don't think okay. we did. No, I don't okay. think we touched on that. So, um, so basically that's what they were talking about. So Joe being facetious and mm -hmm. being sarcastic was like, well, you know what? Spread the word, spread the word. I, I like guys and girls because basically he was saying, well, since the gay community is handing out permission slips of who can do what and, and this that, and the third and, mm -hmm. and who, you know, they can allow you to elevate or they can shut your career down. So mm -hmm. Joe was basically being facetious and saying, well, um, I like guys and girls spread the word, right. spread the word because he was, you know, very much annoyed by the story that they were discussing. Mm -hmm. Well, somebody took that little clip of Joe just saying, uh, spread the word, spread the news. I like guys and girls, you know, it hit me. I'm with it or something. He said, mm -hmm. they took that clip and ran with it on social media. So now here I am as a writer. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when there's something that's trending, I try to give you the headline of what's trending and then you can come on inside and get the context of what's going on. You can come inside and get the details of what's going on. Mm -hmm. I try my best to avoid anything that feels or seems or could be interpreted as clickbait. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think we discussed this last week when I was fussing about how I am only allotted a certain amount of keystrokes for my head my, right. for my title. Right. So I have to make my title compelling enough for it to pique your interest mm -hmm. and make you want to read more without sliding down the slippery slope of clickbait. Mm -hmm. So with this particular headline, I said, Joe Button trends after saying, I like guys and girls. Mm -hmm. That is exactly what happened. Right. He was trending because on his podcast, he said, I like guys and girls mm -hmm. because they took that snippet of him saying they didn't go through the whole context of the whole, you know, rolling loud and the baby and, mm -hmm. and his issues and and his, um, you know, breakdown of communication with the LGBTQ community. They didn't go into that. Mm -hmm. Well, then I got accused of clickbait titles. And I'm like, no, I, this is literally what he said. <laughs> I mean, what y'all want to put video right. of him speaking in the headline? Right. I mean, that's exactly what he did. That's but exactly it was, what it's Absolutely. But it was a stark reminder to me to remind all of you that context matters. Mm -hmm. Anytime you hear a clip of someone saying something wild or a... Mm -hmm. um, a, a quote of someone saying something outlandish. Mm -hmm. Just take five, 10 minutes to go back and find out what was said before and after, yep. because I could be like, I'm thirsty. And they could be like, see, I knew she was a hoe. She always <laughs> out here thirsty. Or I could be standing in the middle of the desert in 99 degree right. weather saying, and damn, I'm thirsty. Absolutely. Context yeah. matters. A, a whole lot. 
if I'm backstage at a Lil Wayne concert and I'm yelling, I like sausage, <laughs> right? But if I am standing in a Waffle House and I, I tell the say, waitress Bob Evans, right. at Bob Evans and I tell him, <laughs> I like sausage, context matters. But, Absolutely. If, but if I'm standing in Bob Evans and y'all just show a video of me saying, I like sausage. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I told y'all she was nasty. <laughs> she, I told y'all. Look at her. See? <laughs> so that's why context matters. Just take a moment to find out if I was backstage at a Lil Wayne concert or if I was at Bob Evans. Yeah. yeah. That's so you true. Know, context and I is know so important. It is. It really, really is. And I know, um, for instance, context again. You know, earlier JB wrote about, um, you know, insecure the episode that came on Sunday night, you know, Lawrence and his baby mama on the show, they were going back and forth over their child. And he wrote a headline about people talking about it on Twitter. Someone comes in, only read the headline. Issa Rae don't care what people think. Boo. <laughs> Nobody was dragging the show. They were having dialogue about what went on inside mm. the show. Context. Right. Yeah. Context clues. Yep. Context matters. Reading comprehension. Remember back in the day when reading used to be fundamental? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It, it, it's it's sad. And it's adults. It's I'm like, adults. Oh, it's adults. We're not it's, even talking about it. yeah. hmm. kids. It's sick. Yeah. So with that being said, um, Joe Budden says that he is not bisexual. He was just, uh, you know, being sarcastic, facetious, whatever you would like to call it when he made the statement. But they took that little clip. I wouldn't even have clip. responded. I would have uh, let nah. him go. I would have showed up in a rainbow Let him go outfit. on with it. Yeah. Let him go on with it. I would have showed up in a rainbow Run with outfit. it and run whatever you want to think about it. Just run with it. Absolutely. Um, Amara La Negra. She <laughs> is pregnant. She is actually expecting twins. So Aww. these are her rainbow babies because earlier this year she suffered a miscarriage. So okay. she is super excited. Her and her mother. And, it, it you know, she showed, shared these beautiful uh, maternity photos. So if you haven't seen the photos, just be sure to visit IceCreamCombos.com to see the photos. Absolutely. Amara is beautiful. Um, yeah, she is. Not really here for dialogue with her, but nah. <laughs> she is, she's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, yeah um, she is. Cash Doll shared some exciting news that she, it, you know, we already knew she was pregnant, but she is expecting a baby boy. Aww. Um, She had a Detroit Pistons themed maternity shoot to oh, wow. share the good news. And of course... I think a day or two later, she was on Twitter going back and forth with people because people said the shoot was ghetto. And I'm like, listen, girl, if you like that shoot and if your baby yeah, was kicking. Yeah, why are you worried about it? Okay. Hey, who right. cares? And I'm okay. saying people saying that couldn't afford a shoot at. Oh, Chuck E. Cheese, let yeah. alone. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying. Stop. God damn. Sometimes you have to consider the source of your criticism. Yes, absolutely. And just le all the time consider the source of your That's, criticism. There it is. All the time, like you said. All, all the, time. the time. All the time. And then you can just leave it right where it was given to you. Exactly. Um, Silk Sonic has dropped a new single, Smoking Out the Window. Aren't Carla, such that's a breath my... of fresh air. <laughs> such a breath of, just a damn breath of fresh air, man. Seriously. Like, that's the only thing when you, as soon as you start, uh, I couldn't wait till we talked about it. That song, though. Mm. This bitch is, I was like, oh, Lord. I Bruno. I was like, Bruno. Like, <laughs> I hollered i laughed and screamed through that whole song and i know it wasn't supposed to be funny yes. i hollered nah, and screamed through that whole song. you have to carla bruno mars and anderson pack made the a she for the streets record <laughs> yes yes with, with classic <laughs> tunes <laughs> Yo, them two are like peanut butter and jelly. Like All they're the like time. the best combination. That they I are. Ever. I am so glad I, the Lord brought them two together. Yes, to mm. yes, yes, yes. Girl, I gotta. You as soon as we done, I'm watching it again. Like I just, <laughs> this I enjoy bitch it. Yes. Is <laughs> when Bruno Mars said her youngins was running around his house like it was Chuck E. Cheese. I screamed. I screamed. Some boys, yeah. Uh, shout out to so yeah, they are, they are, but they aren't they bestie like a yes. breath of fresh. They absolutely like the band, the like just the whole the the comedic mm -hmm. part of them, the throwback I, I vibes, very oh, entertaining, it. just a just very very entertaining. I pay to go see them. I'm I was gonna say you know, I'm I ain't like, paying for a whole lot. Of, you know me. 
I was getting ready to say, I'll come out in the panorama for them. Yes. <laughs> I'll come out. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. So, if you have not seen the official music video for Smoking Out the Window, slide your tail over to Ice Cream Combos Please. and get yourself a good laugh and some good tunes because them yes. boys fools. <laughs> yes, they are. They really are. And fine. Fine, and fine. fools, right? And, and fine. Yes. When, um, when Anderson Pat hit his this bitch, he flicked <laughs> he flicked the ashes from the cigarette. At the yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Smoking out the wind. Oh my yeah, gosh. they jamming. Yeah. They yeah, are for jamming. For real. Um, also, I wanted to talk about Black Panther: Wakanda Forever. So, really quickly, I want to send up prayers uh, for Letitia Wright. Um, y'all know she's Shuri. She plays uh, T'Challa's sister um, in the Black Panther films. She was injured back in August. And this is what I'm talking about when folks be lying and then the lies catch up to them. Mm. Because she was um, injured in an action sequence that was filmed, I think, with some type of crane or something. Mm -hmm. Back in Boston. Back in August, she was hospitalized momentarily, which makes sense because if you have an A-list actress, you know, a, a high profile actress, she gets injured. She needs to go to the hospital to get checked out. Mm -hmm. Point blank, period. Right. Right. All right. So they were like, yeah, you know, um, she was taken to the hospital. She's been released. Um, it will not impact production um, of the film, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, oh, OK, they called it a minor injury. Okay, so minor injury might be a cut, to mm. a sprain, to, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, that was August. It's November, and they are shutting down production <clears throat> of Black wow. Panther Wakanda Forever because they have been filming without her since. Wow, since August? Since August, they have been filming without her. They have filmed every single scene that they are able and capable of filming around now, her okay. and without right. her, and now they need her. Sis in London recovering. Wow. She was hurt way worse than they let on. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because a rep for her released a statement saying um, that Letitia asked for your prayers and she's expected to be back. She's ex hopefully, I think it was something like hopefully or she prayerfully or something. She is expected to be back on set filming early 2022. Oh, wow. She's rehabbing from something. She hurt. She, she yes, hurt her. She's re she, yeah, so I said, she's rehabbing from something. She hurt her. Yeah. But they lied. They yeah. lied. Yeah, they I guess they it, have um, to downplay it. I guess, I you guess gotta not to, to put her business yeah, out there. Yeah. And maybe I always funding. thought, like, isn't that like publicists are taught to downplay situations like that, yep. I guess? Absolutely, they yeah. are. So, you know, I'm just like, oh, boy. You know, and so just keep her uplifted in prayer because... Um, She's hurt. Oh, can you hear my grandbaby? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I guess my grandbaby decided it's time for me to stop podcasting. She ready to come see me. She is ready to come see me. Her mama trying to keep her from busting up in uh, look into my podcast studio. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, so just keep uh, Letitia Wright uplifted in prayer. Um, it was one more thing that I wanted to touch on before we go. Um, the Harder They Fall has been released on Netflix. Mm -hmm. It is the Western starring Idris Elba, Regina King, Lakeith mm -hmm. Stanfield. Like you name OG a hot, goats. listen, you name a hot black actor or actress they are in this film mm -hmm. right now and it is absolutely fantastic i enjoy okay. it it's a western with reggae music as the soundtrack like come okay. on like, stop playing i love with me. that yes yes but the keith i gotta um took to social media and shared that while filming he was going through a very he was like he was down bad mentally while mm. filming this amazing, you know, movie. And mm. he said he was drinking every night um, mentally, you know. Luckily, he was able to bond with his horse. Bonding with his horse actually helped him. And it makes sense because so many people who have horses love their horses with hey, their whole animals, heart. Animals, period, though. Yes, yes, you're they absolutely right. That's, absolutely. An, that's his emotional support horse. Yep. <laughs> 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 Yeah, yeah, so you, get, a, you get on my nerves so bad. <laughs> imagine, sad. wait, it's imagine going on a flight and you show up with a horse. With a horse, horse, horse? 
I'm sorry. I'm gonna need first class seating. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I need just give me the whole for you know the whole first row. I'm yeah, gonna need that just, whole first row. Just give me the whole first row yeah. for me and my emotional support horse. But <laughs> yeah, so but the best news in all of it is he revealed that he is now almost six months sober. That is so, so that awesome. Is a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Because that is a blessing. Lakeith is extremely talented. Yes. At the same very. time, he is a weirdo. Yeah. I think, like, I don't know. If Lakeith is, I'm just trying to figure him out. Because sometimes, sometimes I feel like Lakeith, like, and no offense to anyone, but I always feel like Lakeith, like, Lakeith would be one of those ones like Ashford. Are you on yeah. the spectrum? Or I, is I, it, I would is definitely, it, you know, I would definitely say he's on some. He's type a of genius. Spectrum. He's so talented. He's so is talented. So talented. But yeah. I agree. It is a weird. It, there's a it, it's certain quirks about him. Certain. Yeah, yeah I agree. I Let really do you agree. You, when you watch the harder they fall, it's gonna make you be like, Ah, Healy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's so god darn sexy in that movie. Yo. I love it because <laughs> sometimes I look at him and be like, "Yes," and then sometimes I look at him and be like, "Yeah." Yeah. And the harder it's they all fall, about the role. It's all about the role he plays. Mm, that is so true. He That's is so funny. Literally an acting chameleon. Like yeah, that man is, is talented. Very, very talented. Yeah, he's talented. But you know what? He also strikes me as one of those actors who get so deeply engrossed in their character that it takes him time to decompress and he may have to get some type of counseling to come out of it i can see that i can see that he strikes me as that type of actor yeah and you see a lot of actors that way and actresses go through that oh yeah unfortunately we had some that get so engrossed that you know and it changed their life some aren't Mm -hmm. here because of the characters they played Absolutely. Think about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. You know. Um, just real quick, I have an update on Fetty because I know. Oh, so. do you? Oh, poor <sighs> Fetty. <laughs> Fetty looking at some hard time. Go ahead. What you got? What you got? Yeah. What's the update? God forgive me because you said he looking at hard time. Um, I'm just saying <laughs> it don't look good. Yo, can you stop <laughs> making vision references? <laughs> so. God forgive both of us, yo. Um, so Fetty has been uh, ordered released from jail on half million dollars bond. Okay. Um, so that's five hundred thousand for those of yeah. you that's like, what's a half million? Um, Carla and I are not doing math on this. <laughs> 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 um, you know, you may recall that Fetty Watt was um, arrested last week at the Rolling Loud Festival in New York City, and he is accused of um, distributing more than 100 kilograms of cocaine, heroin, fentanyl, and crack cocaine across Long Island and New Jersey. So, um, you know, his attorney says that he is innocent. But as far as um, his condition of release, he is um, required to wear an ankle monitor and he had to put his home up as part of his bail package. But the good sure news did. is, I'm sure that's a high yeah. that bail. Is, yeah. And, and that's not including your lawyer fees. Right. Like th- this is the type of uh, lawsuit. I mean, the type of lawsuit. This is the type of battle that could end your like literally end your career. All your money just gone. Yes, absolutely. just because of legal costs. Mm-hmm. And and I know Hey What's Up Hello face. ain't got them type of royalties attached <laughs> to it. So um, they did grant him permission to continue to go around, you know, to travel, to uh, perform. But he has to get it uh, okay ahead money. of time. Right. So he can still make money because ultimately. Government, government, government. Because ultimately they, they want him to make money absolutely. so they can get their money. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. That's what it's all about. We know they how it goes. want go. that money. Yep. We know how it goes. Shout out to Mendices. It's your word. <laughs> right. God duh. Yeah. Remember Shout that? I like his, yes. Literally all of his money from reality TV went to what? Legal fees? At Absolutely. The time? Absolutely. And, and that's why and that's why and fines. That's why Yandy had a play play wedding because they wasn't go she wasn't gonna let them touch her money. <laughs> I know that's right. That's why she had her little make believe wedding. Yes, Yandy's smart. Very yeah, smart. Yeah, she is. She's yep. smart. Yes. Yeah, especially she's gonna yeah. hang on to her ducats. She said, Listen, <laughs> I'm gonna wait till you get all these legal fees behind you and then you get released and then we yes. can do a little we can do a little Dubai wedding. So I ain't even seen the paperwork <laughs> on that, so I'm still not sure if they married. <laughs> Word. I ain't mad at her though. 
Hey, listen, you got to do what you got to do to protect your yeah, pennies. Absolutely. Your coins, your pennies, yeah. your dolores. <laughs> you got to do what you got to do. It was yes, something ma'am. else that I wanted to touch on real quick. I wanted to make sure that you knew that Fetty Wap was coming home so you yes. could sleep a little better at night. <laughs> and th- Stop. Stop playing, man. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, uh, Wu-Tang, um, an mm-hmm. American saga, uh, you know, the Hulu series based mm-hmm. on the origin story of the Wu-Tang Clan. Um, they have been renewed for a third and final season. Okay. So um, probably more than likely we'll get it next year. Um, yeah. Late next year. Yeah. And I think that is all. Oh, the two gentlemen. What? No. Oh, I take that back. The two dudes, because I'm not even calling them gentlemen. The mm-hmm. two dudes who were indicted and charged in Jam Master Jay's death, mm-hmm. they will not face the death penalty. Oh, wow. Yeah, they will not face um, capital punishment. So um, that was a recent development in this case. Wow. Um, so, you know, they escaped the grasp of lethal injection, I suppose, um, and the killing of Jam Master J, who was killed in a recording studio back in 2002. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's just a very sad case, how that went yeah. down. And then, you know, the saddest part is, not only was Jam Master J taken from us, but then after he was taken from us, then we started learning about things that he was doing behind the scenes. Yeah, that I think would, that part. Yeah. That would just lend to kind of t- trying to tarnish his reputation. Just, yep, yep. Ah, just, just not good. Just no, not good. Not mm-hmm. at all. No. Especially when it, it doesn't even look like from what like you're seeing, it doesn't even look like that was the reason why he was even killed. It looked like it was jealousy. Or somebody yeah. just being mad. Well, um, in the most recent um, update on the court case, they were saying that Jam Master J and these two dudes were mm. actually going uh, something to do with some type of drug deal. And okay. Jam Master J cut them out the deal. So Jealousy. Yeah. I was like, God, dog it. You know, yeah. y'all ladies, like, if the Lord affords you an opportunity to get out of that lifestyle, yeah. just get out of it. Leave it behind. And I know it's easier yes. said than done, depending on where you come from and, and who you're tied to and family members and all that. But strive, strive to get out of it. Strive. Yeah. It's no good ending to it. Never, never a good ending. Usually jail or death. Yeah. Or either you go real. to jail and die in jail. It's one of the Or one, your people. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. All right. So um, the last thing that I want to speak on really quickly as we head out the dough, because I'm looking at the front dough, because <laughs> uh, my grandbaby on the other side screaming. <laughs> um, Kanye West stopped by Drink Champs podcast. Oh, yeah. Carla, oh, yeah. what are your thoughts on Kanye? Oh, there's so many different thoughts. Like, I like it went through different emotions of like, all right, let me check this out. Because I haven't looked at it. Honestly, I haven't paid Kanye West any mind in probably the past seven years so yeah <laughs> i'm like how old are them babies that's when you start yeah, going yeah, back yeah. To, but um like so when I, I went through different emotions i went through emotions like okay he's not uh, that valley voice is fading a little bit i heard was it me or sometimes he spoke in like that valley or that weird kanye voice and then i heard chicago yeah mm-hmm. i kind of was going back and forth and there were moments where he had me like man <laughs> and then there were and then i saw him the other moments where i was like oh Nah, yeah. you see, you right. It, it's still you. It's still it's you. Still but you. so I got like a lot of different emotions. But I, I do. There were moments where I totally agree with Kanye, and I haven't mm-hmm. agreed with Kanye in a long time. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So I, I thought it was very interesting, and he dropped a lot of bombs. He dropped a lot of bombs. Oh God! <laughs> like big, like it was so many people who needed a hug after that interview. Absolutely. Like Big Sean needed a hug. Just yep. Blaze needed yep. a hug. Talib needed a hug. Yeah. It was so many people yeah. who needed a hug yeah. after uh, John Legend needed a hug after that. Um, because they caught a rat from a narcissist. When you're like in their little in their way, because I mean, let's be honest, that's what that's what yeah. that's what yeah Absolutely. is. Yeah, yeah. And you're right. So many people needed a hug, but I think Big Sean. Probably needed the, needed biggest, the hug. biggest hug of them all. He did, he did. I, I, I'm, I pledge to be a tribute. I hug him, <laughs> <laughs> caress him in my bosoms. I'll give him a hug. <laughs> you know, um, for me, watching Kanye was literally like it felt like watching a movie, and this is how I'm going to describe it as mm-hmm. I head out the door, right. Watching that Kanye interview on Drink Champs felt like watching a movie where sometimes they had flashback moments. 
Mm-hmm. Sometimes mm-hmm. they had foreshadowing to the future, mm-hmm. and then they had the present tense, right? Mm-hmm. So throughout that interview, you got glimpses of the old Kanye. Yes. The you know the Kanye who the college dropout Kanye. Yes. You know the old Kanye who wore the backpack and and yes. just wanted to make a world uh, make the world a better place. And then right. you got snippets of hurt Kanye, lost Kanye. Yeah. Then you yeah. got. A lot, a lot of scoops of narcissist kind. Of oh my goodness! Um, yeah, we and did. Then, uh, it, it it was just like watching a movie that just bounced back and forth yeah. between all these different Kanyes. Yeah. I really feel like there are about five Kanyes housed inside his one body, <laughs> and I and and at times I feel like they're in conflict. Yeah. You know, you have the Kanye who's a narcissist, but then you have the Kanye that still wants everybody to like him and gets frustrated because everybody don't yeah. like him and yeah. everybody can't see his vision or everybody don't buy into his vision. Mm-hmm. So then he lashes out but or then tries to tell us how much money he has. So therefore, because he has so much money, then we need to s- listen to him because he must know what he's talking about. Because Straight he's narcissist. so smart. It, it, it's, it's so much. And then when he talked about the red hat and he was like, oh, just because I don't wear the hat, I'm still on the same thing and then it's like ah he pulled you in and then he pushed you out and then he yep. pulled you in and then he pushed yep. you he turned you on then he turned you off and it was a uh, it was that's the whole interview just going on and on with nori yep. just standing there smiling at him like uh, he found he? his his long lost <laughs> father after 30 years and 1-800 people search like nori was the happiest person on the yes, planet but was. i understood his happiness because he knew he had landed the interview nobody else could get there it is. And then the thing was, it was a difference, though, because there have been people who had the opportunity to interview Kanye, but Kanye gave Nori a different energy because he felt comfortable with Nori. Yeah, he, totally that's, comfortable. That's like me They come from the same you. world, though. Yeah, they come from the same world. That's me interviewing you. You're going to tell me things that you're not going to say to other people. Yeah. You're going to yeah. let your hair down in a way with me that you're yeah. not going to let your hair down with other mm-hmm. people. And I, but I will say, I really was shocked at how hard he went at people. But the way he went at the people felt like he was going at them from a place of hurt versus because That's Talib. What- Talib, excuse me, Talib, Sean, and John. He mad at them because they came at him because of his red hat, his political stance. Mm-hmm. So he lashed that's, out at them. But that's the whole definition. And I hate to keep saying narcissism yeah, and narcissism. No, no, no. All of this is, is, it just proves who he is. Because he that's I, what they do. They lash out. I mean, look at the guy that used to run our country not too long ago. Like, if you notice, they have so many similarities, mm-hmm. right? That's why he so backed many. him. Yeah. And he used to do the same thing. You lash out, 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 you lash out. Mm -hmm. And it's all just inner emotion that you just like, people not, it's not your world. Like, it's not going to always work out like you want it. Mm -hmm. And that's just. But what's wild is, like you said, in the midst of all the nonsense and things that Kanye was talking and, and sometimes, sometimes I went to my happy place because I was like, yo, I can't follow along with this. But two things I walked away with. Drake lives in that man's head rent free. <laughs> yeah. Rent free. Like Drake got a seven bedroom mansion. Yeah. With a in ground pool in the back. Um, in Kanye's head. Yeah. He lives rent free in Kanye's head. Yeah. And I think Kanye's biggest issue with Drake, I mean, he said what he said, you know, how Kanye, um, Drake takes shots and and Drake plays chess with, you know, Drake, a a DM, all the women in your family. And and then he made, you know, he took a shot at him on um, the song with Travis Scott. But then Mm -hmm. Kanye got to take his kids to a birthday party where the song playing. (laughs) Yeah, like that. So like, come on, really? Yeah. Yeah, give me a break. Yeah. Um, but Dramatic the, as hell. Yes, but then at the same time, when he starts talking about um, Planned Parenthood and when he starts talking about, you know, abortions and, and talk of, you know, some of the stuff was like, okay. But then there were moments where he made sense with things. Mm-hmm. And, and it was just like, God, dog. So he'll pull you in with the, I feel like that's when his mother was showing up in him. Mm-hmm. When he was saying mm-hmm. the things that just made so so much sense yeah. about just bettering our people and 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 that I felt like that was his mother showing up in it. I and, I looked at it like that and I looked at it like honestly what I took out of those two they almost got his meds to where they need to be. 
<laughs> and I'm not joking at all. Like, I'm dead serious. You understand what I'm saying? So that's where, when you say, like, his mama, like, I really feel like those moments that we see him, like, are because his meds are like, like, honestly, I'm not judging him. I feel like we know Kanye has issues. But mm-hmm. I felt like we saw a health, we heard a healthier Kanye. Do you agree yeah. with that? Yeah. yeah. Definitely a little more healthier and more, a little more stable. But, but then it also didn't help. I, as much as I love Drink Champs podcast. I already know where you grew I'm right. still, I will still never get comfortable with Norie- Noriega pushing alcohol on people. Yep. And that's. In, in the ahead. middle I'm of sorry. an interview yep. to, yep. to inebriate them. And yep. I get the whole loosening them up. I get the whole loosening yeah, people up. Yeah, but, but it depends on who that, ind- every individual reacts differently to alcohol. Beanie Siegel literally was like. I have to bring somebody up here to drink for me because Beanie, I don't know what Beanie is going through health wise or whatever, but right. Beanie did not want to drink and Nori kept forcing, pushing it and pushing Some it and pushing it and pushing s- it. And How do you know someone's not an addiction that are alcoholics that are recovering alcoholics? That's, that's my point. That's my point. Beanie Siegel, literally, it made me so uncomfortable. I wanted to pray for Beanie because Beanie was like, oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. He was like, you know, well, we drinking for this. They they had Kanye, not only did they have Kanye drinking, they had him smoking. He drinking. Mm-hmm. He smoking. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, keep it. But here's here's the conflict, though. And this is not a judgment on, it probably is a judgment on Drink Champs, but um, much love from our podcast to them. But still, at the same time, this man, Kanye West is trying to plant his feet in God, right? Mm-hmm. Even though he's imperfectly perfect, right? He's, he's, he's totally imperfect like all of us, mm-hmm. right? But they're giving him alcohol, they're giving him weed, and mm-hmm. he's still trying to pray, like give credit to God in the middle of mm-hmm. all this. So, but if he had turned all that stuff down and didn't fall into line, now he looked like he trying to. It 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 was almost like it's like peer pressure at its biggest. But it was another. Yeah, but I felt like it was another version of Kanye that was like. I, I know I shouldn't be doing this, but then was another version of Kanye like, nah, like you gotta fall in line, you gotta yeah, be down, the pressure you, of got, it. you gotta be down, you gotta fall in line. So we watched multiple versions. It was like Kanye West in the multiverse. You know how they got Spider Man and Doctor Strange in the multiverse <laughs> or whatever. It was like Kanye West and Doctor Strange in the multiverse because we watched multiple versions of Kanye throughout that interview. But God darn it, it was a good watch. Yeah, if you want to be entertained? It's a good yeah, watch. Yeah, it is a good watch. Some of the things yeah. he said are just like. I wish I had editing skills like you to chop it up where like, I mean, mm-hmm. he had some epic quotes. He had some like. He did. He really did. He, he uh, One of the ones I loved the best was like, and he's right. Like when they asked him who he could, he could uh, do a versus battle against. And when he said himself, I'm like, yeah, he might be right. Who else yeah. could do a versus against Kanye West? Yeah. I mean, really, you could I really sat and thought about it. I mean, you could I'm sit talking about Kanye West from- as a package. Yes, right. You could sit somebody across from him just for aesthetics or just for for clicks yep. and, and views. Yeah. But what he really, truly, honestly brings to brings the table. To the, uh, yeah. Who? Yeah. Who? He ain't had to do just blaze dirty like this. No. But, <laughs> Listen, who? I just appreciate blade. him for calling it out for what if, what he saw. That's his opinion. That's mm-hmm. his opinion. How many people are, uh, feel that way, know that way, and never straight out say it? Think about all the times I've called you because I've seen people copying me, my yeah. writing style. Oh, I, we know so many. My social media posts. Yep. So yep. imagine being a, a top producer in the industry and in the game and someone comes behind yeah. you and you feel like they're copying your style. Yeah. Yeah. Whether they, wild whether it's, <laughs> yeah, he is wild as hell. It, I mean, he had Jay-Z trying to defend Just Blaze. Like, <laughs> even if it's, even if it's, um, the the copying is because of influence or flattery still right like right. take it from somebody like take it from somebody like me who gets copied on a very very low level it's still annoying yeah, yeah. it is especially when someone to become it, it, they make profit true you know when i'm saying it becomes profitable you start looking at it like wait a minute True. They're making money off. Hey, they, oh, wait a minute. What Jerome used to say? You, how y'all yeah. just going to let him steal my song? <laughs> <laughs> you right. I'm Word. just saying, like, yeah. So I get where you feel. Like, I know when it happens to you. When I just always tell you, like, Zav, you know. What mm, do they say? Yeah, Copying is like the utmost form of. 
Mm, flattery. <laughs> okay. Flattery my behind. Child. Yeah. It sounds good, right? Yeah. Yeah, it sounds good on paper. I ain't trying to hear that. <laughs> it sounds good on paper. Whatever. Shout out to Ye though, because I honestly, like, that's the first time I've actually listened to Yeah, even gave Ye my ear. And like mm-hmm. honestly, I did. I'm like you. I saw those moments where I was like, let's just hope and pray we get more of that, Ye. Yeah. Yeah. You think the divorce I- played a part? No, he said he he said they not divorced. That's still his wife. Do you think the divorce played a part? <laughs> so he's Kim probably at home holding the papers like, huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what he mean? <laughs> right, right. Cause she, cause she already out kicking it with Pete Davidson. That's so what I'm like, about to ask you. Like the scoop. I know you had to, like. I thought she was already kicking it with old boy. But okay. You know. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, I guess we can go ahead and wrap up on on that note. But yeah, um, thank you so much, Carla, today. Another fantastic podcast. Yeah. Um, ICC friends, thank you always for just tuning in and listening. And um, shout out to my grandbaby for having a whole meltdown towards them, too. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yes, thank you for tuning in to the ICC podcast where we serve delicious scoops of entertainment and celebrity news. Carla, you yes. got any parting words for the good people out here? <laughs> Um, just y'all stay safe because it's like it's we getting close to the holiday and I'm reading and seeing a lot of carjacking and just just be aware of your surroundings while you out there um shopping in these streets. Black Friday coming up. I just I love y'all too much to you know mm-hmm. see something happen to you, just be you know, that could have been prevented. We're talking Absolutely. about preventable things, so Absolutely. Let's be proactive instead of reactive. Yes, let's let's yes. Let's, let's move in that field. Yes. But um yeah, so um I guess my parting words are basically I'm just gonna uh echo Carla. You know, y'all just be safe and 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 be yeah. mindful of scammers because I received an Ooh, email today. Please say that again. Please. Scam, se- scam season. No, still. it's bad. They almost got me. I'm gonna tell you about that later. They almost got my ass. What? Uh, and you close. know, you know. So that's how you know they be next mad level. At me. <laughs> that's how you know they next level because no, let me tell you, I got an email today that mm-hmm. said that my subscription plan for some some shit I ain't never heard of before was going to renew on November eighth. Yes. In the amount of four hundred and one. Oh, they oh. got you with the four hundred oh, or something. Yeah, yeah, Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they got me for the four. They got me for four. And um it was gonna renew um mm. today. Um and if this isn't right, then I can um, call this um, girl. No to hell, girl. It's the same scam. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, let me get off this. Let me get off this podcast so I can get her ass together. <laughs> So I'm looking and I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. Because when I call, the first thing they're going to want me to do is verify the account information. Things like name, address, social, mm-hmm. phone number, mm-hmm. all the things they need to steal my identity. Yeah. So I looked and I said, but it was crazy. It's the first thing. Listen, rule number one, when you get an email, even if it says your Facebook account, you've been copyright or they're going to sh- shut down your Facebook or your Instagram or your Twitter or your Insta- <laughs> um, what is it TikTok or whatever the first thing you want to do always 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 if it's an email correspondent look at the um, the sender email address uh-huh. Facebook will always be Facebook.mail Instagram I can't think of what Instagram's um, handle is but this person who is informing me about my account that's getting ready to be renewed had a Gmail. Oh yeah, do you know that's that that's, that's, that's a job? <laughs> a Gmail. You ain't even got. That's what they G- hit you with. They do, you and it'd be so basic, like Jen, something, something at Gmail. At gmail. <laughs> you won't even have a legit <laughs> email. Yeah. Account to the play- company. Stop playing with me. All the people yeah. who send me the things about, because they go after my Facebook page hard because we have a million okay. followers over there. Yeah. And they'll tell me that my Facebook page got a copyright strike if I don't log in. And they're so good that if they click, if you click, they will create a dummy page that looks like a Facebook login page. Mm-hmm. And the minute you put your username and password, they pick it up, they collect it, it, and take your page. So I'm wow. like, okay, well, you know what? And then when I look, it's like, at Facebook copyright people dot org. No, that's uh, not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They tried it. They tried. But that's a good tip. I'm glad you you um we actually talked about this because it's a lot. You we take it for granted. A lot of people don't know those things. So you actually just gave some really good tips. Mm-hmm. Oh, hold uh, on. Hold on one second. I'm gonna let my grandbaby. She can come in. She can come in. <laughs> 
they can hear her on the podcast already, so she can come on in. Come here. Come here. So this is my grandbaby Eve. As she, you see, she's very happy. Oh, come on, pumpkin. Hey, Eve. Say hi, Aunt Carla. Hi, girl. All right, so look. Hi, on, Boo. We on the podcast, and I want you to say hi to everybody. Say hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. And say ice cream combos. I can cameras. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and then tell everybody, say thank you. Thank you. For listening. Uh-uh. Listen. And say subscribe. Subscribe. And say tune in next week. The last week. Say to Ice Cream Convos. I could come on. Where we serve delicious scoops of entertainment and celebrity news. I didn't news. <laughs> <laughs> all right, y'all. Thank you for listening. ICC. We all we got. Peace out. Love y'all. See you next week. See you. <laughs> Evie, say bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>